wisdom. And so that's their prayer postures. The, the Pharisee, out in front, loud, tax collector in the back, probably low, head down. So here's the Pharisee's prayer. God, he started that way. He says, I thank you. Okay, he's giving thanks to God. But let's see what he keeps saying. I thank you. I am not like other people. What a prayer. He says, I am not greedy. I'm not unrighteous. I'm not an adulterer. Matter of fact, Lord, I ain't like this tax collector back here either. But Lord, you know that. You know that. And that's the way it's praying. I fast twice a week. There's only once required. I fast twice a week. I tithe everything that I get. I tithe. So God, you got that? So he's probably using his prayer for public recognition. And then he probably thought he was accepted by God because of who he was and what he did and didn't do. And the problem was he ignored his heart condition. And his pride condemned him because he had pride. So that's the Pharisee praying there. So we have the tax collector. Like I said, he's over there. He's sitting there beating himself on the chest. Head down. He says, God have mercy on me. Mercy on me, a sinner. Probably his head down, and he might have had his eyes closed. I don't know. And I always wondered, he's standing there, he might have been wincing a little bit because he's saying, God, have mercy on me. Because he might have been expecting lightning to come out at any time, and God's wrath to whoosh and take him out. And so that's the way he was praying. He came in humbleness, he was confessing. He said, I am a sinner. Have mercy on me. He basically was throwing himself on the mercy of the court. Have you all heard that expression before? I'm throwing myself on the mercy of the court. What are you doing? Judge, jury, you all, you decide. You decide. <clears throat> I, I, I'm looking at, for you for mercy. And so that's what the, bear, the tax collector was. So this raises the question, who's righteous and who's unrighteous? And who do you identify with in this parable? Who do you identify with? Remember I said there wasn't a hero bad guy. This is more like a mirror to help us see who we are. Now the Pharisee, the good stuff, he was very religious, he was spiritual, he had good character, religious commitment. He thanks God. He admits he owes himself, his better self to God. He's one of those who takes his religious duty seriously. And he is commended for his spiritual and religious tradition commitment. He was fasting and tithing. So those are the good things. He had been a good church member. And so, the Pharisee, well, excuse me, the tax collector, the good, the tax collector's coming. He's petitioning for mercy. He's coming in humbleness. He's not content with remaining in his sinful self. He, want, he is confessing. He says, God, please forgive me. You know, Jesus told us we need to come to God in childlike faith. Y'all deal with little kids? They have childlike faith. They come, they, they, you know, whatever you say pretty much goes with it. Now, Jesus said, come with childlike faith, not childish faith. And there's a difference. Childlike faith. You know, I talk with Emery, and Emery's gotten to know me pretty good. That's my granddaughter. And uh, one day we were meeting them. Uh, our halfway point is south of the border. If, we're, if Emery's coming this way, we'll meet them at south. Y'all know south of the border on I-95? How many of y'all been there? How many of y'all make that a destination every week? How many of y'all have a big sombrero from there? Alright, well, you know, they got some interesting stuff there. Anyway, we'll pick up Emery. You know, that's the trade-off point. We'll bring her back here, and, and, and Tim will go back. And so, one day we got there. We were, Pam and I were there a little bit early. And so they got there. You know, Emery gets out of the car. Tim gets out of the car. And Emery's coming up, and I go, Man, I thought we were getting eight. We got Emory. Emory just puts her hands on her hips and goes, Bob. She said, You better quit that. <laughs> She's got to know me pretty good. You know, she she takes she gives it back. But anyway, so childlike faith. You know, and you can tell her stuff and she believes and you don't want to you don't steer your kids, steer your kids wrong. So the tax collector, the good he's doing that. He's coming in childlike faith. Now, we have the good and then we have the bad. Now, what's the bad with the Pharisee? 
He was self-righteous. And he demonstrated pride for himself and prejudice for other people. He thought he was better than everybody else. And that's the way he came. So that's the bad. So what about the tax collector? He said, well, he's a good guy. No. Think about this. What was he coming to confess? He was a tax collector. He was probably had cheated his neighbors and other people out of money because he collected taxes and he collected his salary. And so that's the good part and then the bad part. Are you ready for the ugly part? All right, come on. Y'all never seen that, right? Good, bad, and ugly. Come on. But now we got the ugly part. Each one of us can be a church member and do all the right things and do all the right things but not get into heaven because we have pride and self-righteousness. Now, and each person can be sorry for what we've done, but we don't confess, we don't ask, we don't repent, and basically we assume we're getting into heaven because we just said we're sorry. It takes confession and repentance also. So that's the ugly part. People assume they're getting into heaven, but you better be aware of what it is. 1 John 1 9 says, basically, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, which one are you? Are you the saint who's good on the outside, but really self righteous and depending on yourself and good works to get you to heaven? Or are you the sinner who just said, I'm sorry, but you don't confess and repent anything? And a lot of times you're sorry you got caught, not sorry for what you did. How many of you are like that? I'm sorry I got caught. I'm not sorry that I did it, but I'm sorry I got caught. There's consequences. So. The original Chick-fil-A, y'all know Chick-fil-A, right? Wipe the drool. <laughs> All right, Chick-fil-A. Sorry, it's closed on Sunday. Too bad. That's the way it is. But the original Chick-fil-A, I, I told this a little bit before, the original Chick-fil-A was actually called the Dwarf House. Y'all been to it, right? Yeah, you went to a dwarf house. And they have a door that's pretty low. You know, for kids, it's okay to, you know, shoot, they can walk right in. Adults, duh, can't really do it. Unless you crawl in. Or, you know, they got another door. So it's called the dwarf house. So, one person wrote, when it comes to the gates of heaven, they are so low that the only way to enter it is upon your knees. The gates of heaven are so low that the only way you can enter it is upon your knees. And that means being repentant or penitent for who you are and your sin. Saying you're sorry for your sin. You're sorry for your sin. And you're placing your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Indiana Jones. Y'all watch that? How many of y'all are Indiana Jones wannabes? <laughs> or wish you were? One film. Last, well, it's not the last one. We thought it was, but it wasn't. The last crusade. Looking for the grail, the cup that Jesus Christ drank out of. And the place where it was stored, you got to that point, and you had to go through three tests. And the first one, what the clue was, it says, and a penitent man will pass. And you had to figure it out because there was booby traps in there. You just couldn't walk through. And so it says, the penitent man will pass. And so in the end, they're saying, the penitent man, penitent man, penitent man. Because he's already seen what had happened to several people who tried to go through there. And basically, their heads were taken from their bodies. Anyway. anyway. So, the penitent man will pass. Penitent man, penitent man, penitent man. He goes, a penitent man kneels before God. And he kneels. And then, you know, and then he goes, rolls forward. But the point was, the penitent man kneels before God. And that's the way we need to come to God. This penitent. Asking for forgiveness. Whether you've done that the first time or many times. The first time is the good time because you're coming to Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. I'm a sinner. You've taken the punishment for my sin. And I'm coming to you and putting my full faith and trust in you. And that's when you come as a penitent person. And then, after we become a Christian, we need to come back every so often, right? You might as well say yes. Right? I do every day. I am mean, sorry. Good grief. Please forgive me for that. Why would I be thinking? Or why did I say that? Why did I? Ah, that's wrong. Especially when I get in traffic. <laughs> that's how we come. We come as a penitent on our knees. And humble.
Congress to give us power heads. So how are you coming? How are you going to heaven? Are you faith in Jesus Christ or are you assuming that you're going to make it because I'm a good church member? I do this, I do that, I'm in this position, I have this name, I have whatever. It's only through faith in Jesus Christ. That's it. Because think about this. We put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. See, we talk about salvation being saved. The first thing we're saved from is the penalty of sin. Jesus paid that penalty to our punishment. So, we're saved from the penalty, the punishment of sin. But then, we're also being, we are being, we have been saved from that punishment. We are being saved from the power of sin. You said, what? Sin has power. Just as death has power. But Jesus conquered sin and conquered death. And because we put our faith and trust in Him, we are being saved from the power of sin. We don't have to serve sin now. We can have a choice. We have a choice. And then, lastly, we have been saved from the penalty. We're being saved from the power. And guess what the last one is? One day, we are going to be saved from the presence of sin. Because we'll be in heaven. So where are you? Where are you in your relationship with Jesus Christ? Don't have it yet? Have it, but it's not the great? We're in a good relationship. Where are you? I'm going to be down here by this table where the flowers are. You can come down here, talk to me, pray, whatever you want to do. Pray where you're sitting. But talk to me after church, whatever you want. But don't go away with that situation hanging. This Karen's going to play one verse. Thank you.